In this video, we're giving out more tips for young engineers so that you can crush it in your career and rise to the top 1% and we're starting right now. Hey, 1% Nation, I'm Jake Voorhees and welcome back to the 1% Engineer Show where we empower young engineers to rise to the top 1% of their career. So if this is you, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell. Check out the links below for the free 1% Engineer Kit, access to the Discord server with nearly 1,000 engineers and a link to the IG page. Comment below, what type of pain points, what type of struggles are you going through, what type of engineer do you want to become, what are you trying to figure out? We can make a video just for that. This video features a 1% star named Fernando Ceballos. And awesome engineer from Texas who has plenty of leadership, management, and professional experience to share with us. He's not only a professional engineer, so he sat through two phases of the eight-hour exams, first the fundamentals of engineering and then the professional engineering exam after you achieve four years of experience, but he's a career coach, a mentor. He's the president of the Society of Hispanic Professional Engineers for all of Dallas-Fort Worth. He's won multiple awards, including a statewide course leadership award. He was a 2018 millennial to watch. He won a Young Engineer of the Year Award and several others. Fernando first studied at Texas A&M, great school, and today he's sharing his seven, eight years of experience with us, where he works for an engineering company that stands at 128 on the Engineering 500 list. That's listed by Revenues. So it's a medium-sized firm with about 400 employees. So Fernando has a lot of experience, a lot of tips to help you young engineers. So listen up. Thanks again, Fernando. Let's take it over to him for question number one. As a civil engineer, you deal with a decent bit of land development, construction, management, and these types of things. So what is land development? Walk us through this process, Fernando. Hey Jake, thanks for having me on your channel. I'm excited to share some of the things that I've learned as a civil engineer these last six years in my career and uh, looking forward to answering some of the questions that you have for me. So what is land development? When I talk to kids about what land development is or what I do on a day-to-day -day basis, I tell them that I'll play Minecraft for a living. It's my job to take a raw piece of property and build something on it. And so the things that I need to worry about for a project to come to fruition and make our client's dreams come to reality is to ensure that a piece of property is zoned for a specific use. Uh, we also need to make sure that that piece of property has the infrastructure needed to make that project come to fruition. And so if I'm working on a high school, for example, you know, it's my job to ensure that there is, you know, the adequate pipe sizes going to that piece of property, both that's for water and sewer. And also from a storm drainage perspective, whenever it rains, like where does that water go? It's my job to design an on-site system, drainage system, to ensure that there's an adequate amount of sizes in those pipes to account for the water that's going to go on that piece of property. And then whenever the water does leave, you know, how are we going to connect to that? Do I need to design a detention system that's going to connect to the existing public infrastructure? Or am I going to be releasing to a, to a river, you know, uh, by my site? And so it's important for me to really understand you know, what are my constraints and what are my parameters to be able to connect to for my property? In addition to that, you know, there is a lot of other coordination that has to go in place for that job to come to fruition. The work that I do as a land development private uh, commercial engineer is ensuring that I'm working closely with the architects, with the plumbers, with the mechanical engineers, with electricians, with other franchise utilities. You know, for example, gas lines, uh, electric, uh, electrical lines. Um, communications lines there's all these different you know systems that have to go into the piece of property and it's my job to ensure that there is enough coordination going on for the project to come to fruition because the last thing we want to do is to build a system on site that's not going to connect to the building and uh, or the plumber or architect is going to design something that's not going to you know work with our system and so it's really really important for us to you kind know, of work together and ensure that there is you know, everything in place to make that project to a fruition. Okay, okay. Now that we've gotten through that question, thank you. Let's talk about grades in engineering. A lot of people say that you need a 3.8 or a 3.9 to be competitive in engineering. I personally did not have that and disagree with that premise. Fernando, let us know what you think about GPA for engineers. How important is it? Does GPA matter in engineering? I think the answer is it depends. It depends on what company you want to work for. I think if you want to work for a very specific company that only hires people who have a 3.5 GPA coming out of college, then the answer is yes, GPA is very, very important because without the 3.5 GPA, you're not going to get the job that you're looking for. And so it's really important for you to understand what is the direction that you want your career to go. 
Now, if you want to work for a company who's looking for more of a full package person, you know, someone who has a decent GPA, maybe it's not necessarily a 3.5, but someone that's hovering around the 3.0 plus or minus, who has good leadership skills, who has good social skills, who knows how to carry themselves very well, and that's not going to just be very technical driven behind a computer, then yes, then then maybe you're going to be able to get away with having a 2.8 or a 3.1 or whatever the case is. But again, it's, it's really important for you to understand where you want your career to go and whether or not the company who you want to work for hires people with lower GPAs. And so again, you know, when people ask me the question, is a GPA critical for me to be successful? I think the answer is no. But I mean, if you can if you can do it all and get a really good GPA, then by all means, get a great GPA. But if you end up with a 2.7 GPA, but have work experience, you show that you've been taking care of other things outside of school and that you've been involved in different organizations and have good leadership skills, then the answer is there you go. I mean, you you can be successful with a GPA of 2.7 and again, the other skill set along to go with that. Okay, thank you for that. Fernando, can we talk a little bit about your day in the life of being a civil engineer? What's the average day like? What do you do? What is it like with your coworkers? Things like this. What is it? What's the day in the life of a civil engineer from your perspective? So day in the life of a civil engineer and again, going back to land development, what do I do on a day to day basis? Uh, funny enough, I just, I launched a, a video not too long ago on, on that specifically but to answer the question directly here you know my job is a lot of coordination my job you know on a day-to-day -day basis can can transition from being very technical driven on ensuring that there's a design for that project coordinating with my team or coordinating with other uh, you know people part of the team of the project or going out to the field and doing construction inspections and ensuring that the things that are being built out on site are actually being built per the plans. And so again, uh, my job is, is very focused on ensuring that things are going along along uh, with plans, but also on schedule and on budget. And so it's my job to ensure that you know people are doing their task within a certain time frame that we give them. You know, if things are supposed to be done within a, a parameter of uh, you know four hours, and someone's taking six hours to do that, you know, what what's going on there? Is it the lack of training that I'm giving to that employee? Is it a lack of research that they have to be successful? Or was it just something that, you know, was, was um, from the time perspective, it was allocated wrong. And so we need to make adjustments. And so again, when we think about schedules and budgets, it's really important to make sure that things are moving in the right direction. But on a day-to-day -day basis, that's kind of where my job ends up being, right? Kind of all over the place but ensuring that things are moving in the right direction on a daily basis. All right, now, thank you for that. Let's talk about salary question. Everybody wants to know, can civil engineering or can engineering make me rich? Because does it make a lot of money? Does it have a good future? What's your perspective here, Fernando? Are civil engineers rich? <laughs> yes and no, right? Because it depends on the, the company you chose. If you work for a very small company in a very rural area, that doesn't bring a lot of work, then the answer is maybe not. But I think if you're working in a big, you know, metropolitan area that has a lot of workflow, has a lot of movement in the projects, and it's a very, very big company, then the answer is maybe, right? And you're not gonna get rich in the first four or five years of your career, but come year six, eight, you start seeing an uptick in your salary. Uh, maybe year eight to 12, you start seeing opportunities to become an owner in a company who, who potentially does have, you know, their employees become owners. Or if you're, you know, year 15 in and you move to a different company, you know, again, you start seeing those opportunities where you're able to, you know, profit share, not necessarily with your, just your employees, but with, with the company itself, right? And so the company starts to share some of those profits with you as an employee, you know, uh, being part owner and also with just the, the in moving the company forward. And so the, the question is, you know, are engineers rich? I think it depends on your lifestyle. You know, there's plenty of engineers that I see who driving really nice cars early in their career and uh, potentially they're going to jeopardize their ability to become, you know, uh, long-term wealthy because they're just, you're just too focused on um, doing the luxury of life early on. But if you are frugal and you have a good lifestyle and you don't allow lifestyle creep to get the better of you, then the answer is yes, you can become very wealthy and, and um, you know, we can maybe use the word rich later in your career if you focus on the right things. All right, thanks for that salary response. Again, thanks Jake for spending time with me. Um, you know, thank you for inviting me to the channel. I'm looking forward to engaging with your audience in the comment section. And if you guys are looking for anything, uh, specifically civil engineering, feel free to reach out to me on my YouTube channel 
and I look forward to engaging with you on the future. Take care. Peace. Thank you so much, Fernando. Hey, 1% Nation, Jake here. I hope you enjoyed that feature between Fernando Ceballos and 1% Engineer. If you did, consider subscribing because we release plenty of videos to empower young engineers. So if this is you and you want to rise to the top 1% of your career, make sure you subscribe. Check out the links below for the 1% Engineer Kit, access to our Discord server with about a thousand engineers, along with a link to the IG page. Comment below, let us know what you're trying to figure out. Did this video help you? What do you want to learn next? We want to hear from you. Thanks again, 1% Nation, and we'll see you again in another video. Bye-bye.